Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Curse of Oak Island The team explores whole new areas of the island. This week on The Curse of Oak Island, the guys started exploring new areas of the island in the hope of finding new treasures and historical artifacts. The team began searching for shipwrecks off the coastline and also hunted for a secret shaft on Lot 8. The curse of Oak Island always mixes disappointment and hope into a murky soup of emotions, and this week was no different. The third shaft, DH-82, at the money pit ended in failure at a depth of 150 feet, where it met the same fate as the previous two shafts by hitting bedrock. All is not yet completely lost, the team has one more shaft to drill before the end of the season. But with yet more disappointment at the money pit, the team has, understandably, started increasingly switching their focus from that area in an effort to find artifacts and treasure elsewhere. Oak Island team begins looking offshore and on Lot 8. The guys are pinning a lot of hope on the promising data uncovered by CSR Geo Surveysult on Lot 8 and off the coast. The underground surveyors used magnetometers to detect metal deposits underground and out at sea. Last week, the guys took to the high seas and identified two areas where they felt further investigation was needed. This week, they enlisted the help of marine archaeologist Lee Spence to assist ever Tony Sampson in exploring areas where they suspect there is a shipwreck. The two divers hit the water with handheld magnetometers and they were soon getting hits for metal. Unfortunately, they couldn't see anything on the seabed, concluding that the object was obscured by silt and kelp. Frustratingly, the guys will not be granted a permit to excavate if they can't lay eyes on something of potential interest. The magnetometer readings are not enough. But the good news is that Lee Spence, who has over 50 years of experience in finding shipwrecks, reckons there are two shipwrecks buried down there, and that the team should investigate further. The plan is to wait until late winter slash early spring when the waters are clearer, and it'll be easier to spot something. The guys also took a ground-penetrating radar device to further explore Lot 8. This area has been continually uninhabited and is a largely unknown quantity, but the CSR crew recently detected a large iron deposit below the surface. And last night, the guys thought they might have found an actual shaft. The radar picked up two unusual readings at 5 feet and at about 20 feet under the ground. The size and shape of the deeper anomaly appeared to indicate there may be a shaft. Once again, the guys will need a permit to dig. But with their determination, they're bound to find a way. Oak Island team chose a new spot to dig. Meanwhile, back at the money pit, Craig Tester had an idea of where to put the fourth and final shaft. This time they're moving to the east and will follow in the footsteps of Erwin Hamilton, who dug a 170-foot shaft in 1940. At the time, Hamilton hit a tunnel, but thinking it was probably just a booby trap, he ignored it. Craig believes it may have been a secret chamber. The team has previously found traces of concrete from the same area, and the chapel vault is thought to be encased in concrete, so the guys reckon it's worth a dig. Fingers remain as always crossed. This fourth shaft will be named DMT-2 after Craig Tester's son, Drake Tester, who tragically passed away five years ago. The Curse of Oak Island had always been more than just a television show, it was a journey into the heart of one of the world's greatest unsolved mysteries. For years, brothers Rick and Marty Lagina, alongside their dedicated team, had toiled relentlessly delving into the island's enigmatic past in search of the fabled treasure believed to be buried deep within its soil. Theories abounded and countless treasures had been uncovered, yet the ultimate prize remained elusive. As the new season dawned, the team decided to embark on a bold new strategy. The island, with its many hidden secrets, had more to offer than the money pit and the swamp. This time, they would venture into unexplored territories, hoping to uncover fresh clues and perhaps finally solve the island's ancient riddle. Their first target was the northern shoreline, an area largely ignored in previous seasons. 
had received a tip from a local historian about an old legend suggesting that pirates had used this part of the island to conceal their ill-gotten gains. Armed with state-of-the-art metal detectors and ground-penetrating radar, the team fanned out, meticulously scanning the area. The shoreline was rugged, strewn with jagged rocks and dense underbrush. It was hard going. Spirits were high. The potential for discovery was palpable, and the team moved with a sense of purpose. Suddenly, Gary Drayton's metal detector emitted a high-pitched squeal. He grinned, the excitement evident on his face. Carefully, he began to dig, and soon enough, he unearthed a rusted, ornate key. It was unlike anything they'd found before, its intricate design suggesting it was of considerable age. Could this be a key to one of the many supposed treasure chests hidden on the island? Next, the team turned their attention to the island's dense interior. Over the years, many had speculated about hidden chambers and tunnels beneath the forest floor. Marty Ever the skeptic had always questioned these theories, but the recent discovery of the key had rekindled his curiosity. They decided to investigate an area known locally as the Whispering Woods, named for the eerie sounds the wind made as it rustled through the trees. Deep within the woods, Jack Begley and Alex Lagina stumbled upon a series of strange stone formations. They appeared unnatural, almost as if they had been deliberately placed. Using a combination of traditional archaeological methods and modern technology, the team began to excavate. Hours turned into days, but their perseverance paid off and they uncovered what appeared to be the entrance to an underground tunnel. The tunnel was narrow and dark, its walls damp and cold to the touch. Equipped with headlamps and cameras, Rick and Marty led the way, their hearts pounding with anticipation. As they ventured deeper, they discovered ancient carvings on the walls, depicting scenes of ships, treasure chests, and cryptic symbols. Could these carvings be a map or a set of instructions left by those who had constructed the tunnel? The tunnel twisted and turned, leading the team to a large cavernous chamber. In the center of the chamber lay a massive stone altar, covered in dust and cobwebs. As they approached, they noticed an inscription on the altar, written in an archaic script. It took some time, but with the help of an expert in ancient languages, they managed to translate the inscription. It spoke of a great treasure, hidden by those who feared its power, and warned of a curse that would befall anyone who tried to claim it. Undeterred by the ominous warning, the team pressed on. They discovered a series of trapdoors and hidden passageways, each more elaborate than the last. It was clear that whoever had built this place had gone to great lengths to protect their secrets. Along the way, they found various artifacts, including gold coins, jeweled trinkets, and ancient manuscripts. Each discovery added another piece to the puzzle, bringing them closer to the ultimate goal. As they delved deeper into the labyrinth, the air grew thick with anticipation. Knew they were on the brink of something monumental. Finally, they reached a massive, ornate door, its surface encrusted with gems and precious metals. It was unlike anything they had ever seen. The key they had found earlier fit perfectly into the lock, and with a deep, resonating click, the door swung open. Inside, the team was greeted by a sight that took their breath away. The room was filled with treasure beyond their wildest dreams, chests overflowing with gold and jewels, ancient artifacts of immeasurable value, and stacks of priceless manuscripts. It was a treasure trove that would make even the most seasoned adventurer's heart race. However, amidst the excitement, Rick noticed something peculiar. In the corner of the room stood a pedestal with a single, ancient book, resting upon it. Its cover was adorned with symbols similar to those they had seen earlier. Carefully Rick opened the book, revealing pages filled with detailed maps, cryptic writings, and drawings of strange devices. It seemed to be a manual of sorts, detailing the construction and purpose of the island's many hidden chambers and traps. As they pored over the book, the team realized that Oak Island's mysteries were far from fully solved. The treasure they had found was but a fraction of what lay hidden. The book hinted at other, even more elaborate caches of wealth, scattered across the island and beyond. 
It also spoke of a greater purpose, a mission entrusted to those who had hidden the treasure to protect a powerful secret. With renewed determination, the team decided to continue their exploration. The northern shoreline and the whispering woods had yielded incredible discoveries, but there was still so much of the island left to explore. They set their sights on new areas, each promising its own set of challenges and rewards. The curse of Oak Island had taken them on an unforgettable journey, filled with twists, turns, and unimaginable treasures. As they ventured into uncharted territories, the team knew they were part of something much larger than themselves. A quest that spanned centuries, driven by the dreams and ambitions of those who came before them. And though the island's secrets were many, Rick, Marty, and their team were more determined than ever to uncover them all, one hidden chamber at a time.